Okay. Got to move fast here. We got our below freezing shaft from the freezer. I'm going to set you right down right there. And we got bearings over here and gears that have been heated by our super heat gun blast furnace. And hopefully, Mauser Mauser, this shell fall right into place. Let's see what happens. There we go. Make sure we put a ring back on. Because if we don't put a ring on it, we're going to have to come back and put a ring on it. Alright, bearing's a little hotter. Let's see what happens. And then, there you go. Well, that's seated. Like a plop. No press. No nothing. Actually, I probably should have heated the gear a little more. I got the bearing up to about 130. The gear itself was only up to about, I don't know, 90 or so. But frozen shaft, heated bearing, heated gear, they fall right on top of each other. But while we're at it here, <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and put our castle washer on. Lock it in. We're going to put our castle nut on. We're going to go ahead and give it a couple taps. Lock it down real well. I believe that's good right there. Um, from here, we're going to put the whole thing back in the freezer. Ooh, that was a little warm, even though it's on a frozen shaft. Um, just to get the whole thing cooled down before we try to put it back into our case here, because we have tried in the past once to actually, while it's still warm, even though it's on this cold shaft, just let it cool down for a few minutes and try to slip it in, and it did not want to go. So we're going to go ahead and slide it back into the, the freezer and get everything cooled back down. We're going to come out, we're going to tap our nut again a couple times after everything contracts and makes it a little smaller and then we'll lock our castle down. After we lock our castle down, we have our bearing case over top of our bearing. It's basically time to start dumping it inside of our, our fully vertical shaft installed bottom end. And we'll get our final measurement and if it works out, we uh, add a couple seals and everything's done. So, off to the freezer. Okay, fresh from the freezer. Once again, we're going to get our prop shaft put down here. Oh, that's chilly. Uh, use a little assembly lube for our race, for our shim to sit on so it'll stay in place. So, no matter which way we have the bearing case, it won't fall out. Also, the prop shaft seal, Volvo wants you, it has two lips on it, and you know, kind of a gully between the two. They want you to fill that with marine grease, which we've done also. And just to make sure it's all nice and moist in there, we did the back side with a little assembly lube in between the gully inside. So, it should be nice and lubed up for a first start. But, we've got our shaft nice and cold, and we're going to want to put it on after we go ahead and double check our castle nut because everything's the same temp now we want to make sure it's all locked down real well which it is so we're going to bend over our castle washer right there
got it done. <clears throat> we got our bearing case assembled finally and we put it inside the case, the, the whole lower case here and we torqued it down to 30 pounds according to the Volvo manual and we did our measurements with our dial indicator, another one of our top shelf fancy tools. We uh, seldomly use but in this case it was the perfect thing to use according to the manual. Set her up, figured out how much gear lash we have here and we are supposed to have between two thousandths and four thousandths which is in inches strangely enough being that other things are in, in millimeters again in the manual so be careful of that. Um, we would recommend also to get a manual if you even have one of these things. I mean, there's there's ways of just changing the outdrive's direction by meaning that you can use a left hand or a right hand prop. We see it on eBay all the time where people have got left hand outdrive, like Volvo outdrive, and it's like, uh, yeah, it's a left hand or a right hand by just simply changing the shift linkage bar to from one side to the other, and it immediately you can just it runs backwards. They can run forward or backwards; it doesn't matter. It's just making your shifter and your boat right, and that's how you fix that, by just changing the linkage from one side to the other. And of course you have to change the prop, but that's, that's you know, here to here or there. If you don't have a manual and you're missing that, you know, it's, it's pretty strange uh, to give up that advantage to me. But again, we are, we're finished here. Uh, pretty much, like I said, we did our dial indicator, and we came up between two thousandths and three thousandths, uh, kind of pushing it both ways. And being that we're supposed to be cut between two and four, we're set. So from here we need to finish taking it, well we need to take it back apart again. Put our O-ring seals back in. They recommend grease between the two O-rings on the, on the bearing case. Uh, we did that with this drive over here that we took apart for these gears and Boy, it made it a pleasure to take that case back out because it came right back out and we didn't see any water intrusion and we had it out a couple times. It actually, I believe it did, it actually sat in the water for three days during the St. Michael's Boat Show that the 19 was actually at and that was one of the reasons why we had to build this drive and build it would have at all costs at that time. So. So here we are, uh, we need to take this back apart, get, the, get it put back in with all the proper seals, torque it back down, then we'll have to go ahead and touch up a little bit of our bearing case with our, our, our grinder there, or our sander, and uh, just a very little bit here and there. Also pay attention when you do put them back in that they usually do have an up and the down side. You'll find that the smaller side that goes on the bottom because of the skeg smaller. And it'll catch you, trust me, it's, it's happened to everybody, you put it in, you're like, and then sometimes they're a little tougher to get in with the, with the seals and then you're prying it back out again just to get it turned back around, so always something to pay attention to. And uh, we'll get ahead and uh, get it taken apart, get it sealed up, put it back together, and then it'll be time to move on to adding a midsection to this, which I see sitting over there waiting to have the stuff taken off of it, or the... the the tape from painting and uh, from there we'll go to our top which is coming out of the paint shop right over there so we'll uh we'll get ahead and get going on this <laughs> 